Good evening, everyone, uh, to all those who have joined the call, and my best wishes to all of you for a happy and prosperous year ahead. I would like to begin by reflecting on the operating environment during the quarter, post which I'll give you a flavor of our performance and followed by our strategy and outlook going forward. Uh, during the quarter, the operating environment is largely in line with that of the preceding quarter with no discernible uptick in consumption. FMCG volume growth on a four-year CAGR basis remained in low single digits with rural mass and HPC categories tracking lower than urban, premium, and food categories. So far, while the pace of recovery in consumption has not been on anticipated lines, we remain optimistic of a gradual uptick in consumption trends over the course of the next calendar year in light of improving macroeconomic indicators, continued government spending, lower inflation, and substantial cuts in consumer pricing implemented by large organized players in response to an accommodative and stable input cost environment. The prevailing consumption growth pattern, which appears to be more K-shaped, has also led to a continued divergence between how general trade and organized retail has fared, with the former contending with low business growth and rising costs resulting in profitability and liquidity challenges in the trade. Given the heft of traditional trade and its structural and significance in a market like India and they employ a lot of people, we have taken concerted steps to alleviate the strain faced by our partners and revitalize the channel, which is very, very important to rejuvenation of the growth, and especially in the core. We expect these initiatives to have a gradual and positive impact on sentiment in the channel and in the quarters ahead, while the pressure on our pricing, going to be, which impacts realization, also subsided, subsides over the next couple of quarters. Coming to our performance, organic domestic volume growth stood at 2%, which was about 200 bits lower due to a voluntary reduction in primaries to bring down inventory levels at the distributor's end and enhance their ROIs. Despite the impact of this move, the performance of the four-year uh, four CAGR and core portfolios conveyed signs of some improvement. Uh, volume growth on a four-year basis was 5%, and even sequential growth in uh, secondaries improved as far as the core portfolio is concerned. More than three-fourths of our business continue to gain a hold market share and penetration levels. Delving further, volume growth in parachute improved sequentially as used to branded conversion appeared to regain some pace with the brand running consumer advantage pricing and Cupra prices exhibiting some upward bias. As a result, parachute further strengthened its leadership position with a 40 bit gain in market share on mad basis. We expect a gradual upward trend in volume to sustain in the quarters ahead as we move into next year. So, Polo Edible Oil has an optically weak quarter with a mid-single-digit volume decline and a high base of teams growth. During the quarter, trade remained watchful and continued to operate at lower inventory levels of at least four days. The brand also exercised discretion in billing across channels as it did not want to operate below a margin threshold. Looking ahead, given that offtakes remained healthy during the quarter, we expect the brand to revert to growth from the next quarter. Value-added hair oils also improved sequentially with mid- and premium segments growing in mid to high single digits and driving mixed improvement in the portfolio. Growth continued to be impacted by extended weakness in demand and sustained competitive pressures in the bottom of pyramid segment. Moving to the performance of a new business, food maintained its steady growth trajectory, should close the year with at least 750 crores, which would be about 4x of its scale four years ago. Sephora Oats anchored the growth and maintained its position as the number one brand in the Oats category. Honey and soya chunks continue to scale up well and should reach a scale of 100 crores each in the coming year. Both our acquisitions, two elements and clicks continue to meet our expectations. Premium personal care sustained its double-digit growth momentum with a digital first portfolio surpassing 400 crores in exit run rate in Q3. The healthy scale up of foods and premium personal care keeps us on course to clock 20% of our domestic revenues from these portfolios in aggregate this year. We are also actively working on steering brands that are gaining scale towards profitability. For in instance, Diodo will be a bit positive this year, and similarly, just those and two elements should be close to breaking even in the coming year. Our international business was resilient amid transient macroeconomic challenges. Bangladesh exhibited some momentary weakness at persistent inflation and uncertain business con conditions leading into the recently held general elections. While the core portfolios are a soft quarter, new portfolio shampoo and baby care fared better. 
now the elections have been concluded we expect business performance to normalize and we should revert to developing healthy growth in quarter 4 itself and the january trends are encouraging south east asia also had a modest quarter marked by sluggishness in the hpc category in vietnam we expect to hold strong given the strength of our portfolio the mira business continued to go impressively as both middle east and egypt business flourished south africa and our new country development and export business also registered solid growth we had embarked on a journey to strengthen and diversify international business while the journey is still under way we have developed fundamentally strong businesses in each of the regions who are focused on getting the right portfolio gtm cost structure and leadership right the year has been characterized by a persistently challenging operating environment but we do positivity from the improving growth trajectory in our core portfolios although the growth has been slight as well as the degree of success achieved in our diversification journey both in domestic and international business we have also initiated corrective measures to reignite growth in the gt channel which will be the most critical aspect to get better not only growth but also diversification of our portfolio in chemical cosmetic and food and rural expansion we are determined to get gt back on track which we believe will be instrumental in restoring the pace of volume growth in the core mass consumption categories better offset trends and market share gains in our key portfolio also keep us in good stead we believe that the improving trajectory in offset growth across categories will be followed by a similar trend in secondary and primary growth in the quarters ahead and we have already started parachute seeing parachute exhibiting this trend top line growth continued to be dragged by erstwhile pricing interventions and domestic portfolio and devaluation headwinds in certain international geographies but we expect this to taper off further as revenue growth to turn positive in q4 on the profitability front we will be delivering record high operating margin this year led by gross margin which has set to expand by 450 to 500 bps and even after ramping up brand building investments behind both core and new businesses while we aim to maintain a resilient margin profile in the quarters ahead our focus will be also to deliver sustainable volume led growth and by reinforcing our strategic priorities last but not the least we have always viewed our entire business operations through the lens of sustainability and our sustainability 2.0 framework has been progressing well along with each of our defined focus areas we firmly believe the value of creating shared value for all will aid us in driving sustainable growth in the longer term a dedicated micro site captures all esg related information and successful projects and hope it will aid all stakeholders in gathering all the relevant updates updates on the progress we are making towards our sustainability goals with that i will now close my comments thank you for your patient listening i am most happy to take all your questions Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take a first question from the line of Agnish Roy from Noama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on uh, true element. So here you said that uh, next year you are targeting uh, break even. Uh, here, if I see the category is very attractive, and uh, we are seeing uh, many large uh, companies also uh, quite interested here. Plus, there are a few D two C brands. So my specific question is, uh, what is the distribution scale up here? done till now and where do you see distribution in the next three years because another listed company in similar space uh, took distribution 10x post uh, acquisition and in terms of uh, the differentiation in strategy uh, pre and post acquisition once you have taken over are you changing the strategy in terms of uh, uh, the positioning or in terms of uh, pricing etc anything meaningful versus uh, pre acquisition so, so i think uh... as you know packaged foods has significant opportunities and especially uh, true elements operates in the what i call healthy space in breakfast they are into seeds and snacks and both you know breakfast and snacking space and the opportunities are endless uh, normally what happens when and this has been seen even in beardo is that once marico takes over 100% the trajectory of growth improved because we also continue to leverage our existing 
you know, GT distribution, which we haven't done as far as true elements is concerned, but we have plans to do that. And I think once true elements and Sapola have this unique ability to have a two brand play where true elements also plays in breakfast and snacking at a premium end, while Sapola continues to play at the mastige kind of an end. And therefore, I believe that the potential of two elements is significant. Now, one of the other things we must keep in mind is that uh, we have been extremely mindful of the fact that while our digital businesses makes good gross margin, uh, two elements is food, so we have made effort to also ensure that there is gross margin improvement, that overall our digital businesses, which are right now 400, 500, and we expect it to grow, that in the next you know two to three years, hit double digit plus EBITDA in that, you know, the overall digital businesses because that is very important because if there are growth drivers, so we are mindful of the growth and the profitability together and I think, uh, I believe that there is enough GT potential. We have started in a small way with Beardo and we expect to do that with all the brands in the future. Sure. Thanks. Uh, two more uh, small follow-ups on food's business. So one, uh, Flix looks uh, very attractive and very differentiated opportunity, very attractive packaging. So what are the initial uh, learnings? What are the initial findings? And second is on Masala Oats, another listed company entered a few quarters back. They are trying a slightly different position, uh, which is millets plus oats. Uh, millets has become, uh, in fact, quite normal by most FMCG companies. So I wanted to understand in Masala Oats, how is the competitive intensity? And uh, you have enjoyed an extremely good run there. Uh, do you see some risk of market share loss uh, next two, three years? Okay. So, uh, what was your first question? Sorry. I... Flix, Flix. Flix, yeah, yeah. So, I think, you see, Flix operates in the overall wellness space. And I think compared to some of the other brands, it's a very, very young, vibrant brand. Now, wellness, there are different opportunities. If you see as wellness, there are multiple vectors of wellness. There is, you know, which is cardiovascular, there is diabetes, there is weight management, there is bone health, there is gut health. So, therefore, Plix offers huge opportunities to operate as a full spectrum wellness brand. The good thing about Plix is, I think, the innovation velocity, strong consumer insights, and their quality of digital marketing is extremely best in class. And if you look at Flix, I see a 200 crore plus opportunity even next year, the way the run rate is. And therefore, I believe, and also the compared to the other brands, including, uh, you know, in this space, the bleed is extremely low. So I believe it's a very holistic business and it can obviously go along multiple vectors and set for itself as the wellness brand. So if you really look at it, we have will have then a three brand play where Flix plays on wellness, uh, true elements plays on overall both snacking and breakfast, but a little bit premium and Sapola plays on mastige and then Sapola also can get into some other categories, which is plant protein immunity, which are already presented. So therefore, it will be a comprehensive food play. Now coming to masala out question, see, I think the penetration of the category is very low. So it's good that multiple players are investing to grow this category. Yes, you might lose share, but at the end of the day, I think what is most important is that Indians now have a choice of having far better, healthier, in-between meal snacking. Uh, we also have millets in some of our variants already, and we are very, very uh, focused on ensuring that millets is a success. Uh, and therefore, uh, even in oats, as you know, there is a variant which has millets in some of our masala oats that also, and therefore... I think the position, it's not about the positioning. I think it's okay to have multiple players expanding this category because there is no reason why this category shouldn't have double digit uh, penetration in the next couple of years. Sure, uh, thanks. Uh, my last question will be on the traditional Pirana uh, channel. Uh, growth has been very challenging across most companies here, and you did uh, speak of the stress here. You also spoke that you will be. Uh, Taking, you are taking a lot of proactive steps here to get a gradual uh, recovery. My specific question is uh, India's largest consumer company, uh, they are uh, moving towards a uh, alternate structure where uh, more of variable component and less of fixed component. So what are your thoughts on that? And if you could give uh, some more uh, color as to what exactly you are doing because uh, there the shelf space issue remains, there uh, regional players issue also remains. So 
the intrinsic issues how do they change because the competition with the uh, uh, online uh, the quick uh, commerce the, that also remains so uh, are the problems changing or will it be more of the market share uh, gains uh, which will help you okay so i will give you a more uh, you know overall holistic view about this i don't want to comment about anybody's margin profile and all the plans see if you look at it and there is something slightly unique to marico uh, you know we have in our organized trade and urban we have a far more skew on sapola and food while coconut oil and hair oil dominates our urban mass and rural we also don't sell sachets so therefore our gross margin of and our profitability of the mix which we sell in uh, gt mass and rural is far higher number 2 is what has happened is that the entry barrier to organized trade has reduced therefore you can buy perhaps volume share or you can buy this one by spending there continues to be a significant entry barrier for creating distribution infrastructure and therefore a rural distribution or a strong urban distribution is a source of competitive advantage having said that obviously when you are a challenger brand it's easier to get market share in say ot compared to gt because gt you have to make that systemic effort like for example if you look at honey for example as a category we have far more share in ecom or modern trade compared to gt but having said that i think one of the things we have realized is that there needs to be some kind of a systemic effort to drive two things and the urban a far better quality of distribution in food chemist and cosmetic that drives our diversification because that diversification is driven at a higher gross margin and the second thing is a rural a rural distribution now for that to happen these are costs now what are the things which you know and the other which is the other issue that has happened is that in the absence of revenue growth in that channel especially in urban you know uh, till last year because of sapola you know inflation obviously there was revenue growth during covid there was revenue growth because of modern trade was not you know working at full potential and also the smaller players were not there and therefore large organized players including us had a significant growth in gt which is now got absent so i think this problem has started got accentuated from q3 in the last year now there are four or five levers one is stock one is credit because ultimately we want we want them to give more credit in the market we want higher strs in the because we have lost strs in the this one now margin is something we have to take a call you know how we give the best possible margin for roi so i think we are looking at all the levers the easiest one to do is a stock reduction or a stock you know it's not a correction but a reduction because that we can make up by better and nimble footed supply chain so we are doing at a host uh, full of you know initiatives which we'll do one by one we are doing it in a resource neutral way that there are wastages in the system and there are investments we want to be want it to be done so we will do it in a phased manner such that the roi of the partners improves we can invest behind growth in distribution direct distribution not only in rural but in urban in these channels we get back the strs gradually because we have lost strs and we ensure that we facilitate higher credit to retail which they can do at the same time improve the roi so this is going to be done in a phased manner over the next couple of quarters but we believe that will lead to core growth and that will also lead to better diversification of our portfolio in gt because a lot of our diversification of portfolio today has happened much more ot led so sure, thanks uh, that's all from my side thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of avi mehta from macquery please go ahead uh hi sir i just wanted to follow up on the gt comment would uh, are you looking at you know these changes in supply chain margin changing the level of inventory is that the thought uh, that keeps in the channel or is it more uh, because you uh, target about nimble supply chain so would love to un- or love to understand what do you mean by these and could you just clarify or give us some examples of what are the changes that are being done to change uh, to kind of drive growth so i am again i am just giving you in a structural way i'm not getting into specifics but if you look at it 
Ultimately, I give my distributors a certain margin. They have certain costs. I give them a certain credit. They give certain credit in the market and they hold some inventory. Without getting into permanent, you know, hit to the PNL, what are the things we can do in terms of our efficiency to first drive ROI of the distributors? I think that's the philosophy which we are following. So that they make ROI, we ensure we have resourced our distribution expansion and we also ensure they pass on, they can pass on better credit to trade so that the trade SPRs go up. I think, uh, see the margin is something is a one way street. Okay. So that, that's the last resort we will lead to. And even in margin, we can look at, you know, things like high margin brands, which are the diversification, this one. But there is no need. Similarly, you know, if you look at wholesale distributors, they don't need. So I think margin is something which we'll tackle later, but there are enough other ways to manage it. For example, I am prepared to keep on reducing inventory such that, because inventory is a cost of carrying that inventory doesn't drive offtake. No? We have to ensure all our investment to us to a driving offtake. So just a follow-up, could you kind of help us understand how this inventory has changed, say, you know, four years back, what the channel inventory was, what is it now, and probably, you know, five years ahead, how should we look at that? Just to get a sense on, because it seems you're targeting more channel inventory, trying to you know, modify that. No, no, I think channel inventory is the only one step. The reason I shared about channel inventory is we have done it. As we do some more initiatives over the next two quarters, at the end of the quarterly, I mean, in the quarterly call or the quarterly note, I will share with you what are the initiatives. Right now, we are not in a position to share the initiatives. Now, coming to inventory, I think, see, what has, what happens is, if my, if GT was, say, 100, the revenue, okay, and as you know, in some of the urban, some years, there's a deflation plus there's a volume decline. If that has become 90, obviously, for that revenue, and the fact that STR has also gone down in trade, the holding has gone up. So therefore, we have to start ensuring the holding keeps on coming down. And so I think that's the framework which we are doing. That now, as I said, that this is the first initiative. There are other initiatives which we will intend to do, which will, will also, for example, we may be running certain trade schemes which are inefficient in the market. Okay, uh, we can be running certain promotions which are or program, retailer program, which are inefficient in the market. So we are looking at the entire gamut of trade spend, which are huge, that investment, and looking at the resource allocation so that all the resource allocation is done towards viability of our distributors, profitability of the margins uh, in the trade, so that they deliver better service. They are in a position to expand distribution, because distribution means more feet on street. They are, can give more credit, and that all leads to more offtake and better range selling and better assortment. Got it, sir. Got it. Fair enough. So my second question was on the uh, comment on resilient EBITDA margin, especially as, you know, if we look at FY25. With our portfolio composition now changing, would you see this move to 21% levels or that we are talking about by 2024 as a new normalized uh, level? How should we look at that, sir? So I think so. Uh, Two of a couple of things, and I will also ask them, Pavan, to give you a, you know, elaborate on this. See, the thing is that one of the good things is that the diversified part of the business has now a blended gross margin, which is almost higher than the current portfolio. So, which is the first thing. So, between foods and digital, our gross margin is higher than our core portfolio, which we have achieved this year. The second thing which we are doing is that with far better efficiencies of spend, and as you know now, we are a house of brand, four or five digital businesses with all the driving efficiencies of scale. We are in a position to get double digit EBITDA, you know, over the next two years in this business. And we are also targeted to target foods in the two to three years. So that part of the business, I think, is in good hands. Now, obviously, uh, it is also a factor of, you know, inflation, deflation. But having said that, I think uh, this is something our effort next year also will to uh, deliver, effort will be there to deliver double digit, you know, profit growth. In the case of international, obviously, there have been some issues in terms of currency deflation. Now, we hope, given that the Bangladesh elections are over, 
Sometime during the second of the year, we anniversarize that currency depreciation. Uh, and also, as you know that we are doing fairly well now in the Middle East, North Africa and some of the other markets which are, you know, which has potential for improvement of, you know, operating margin expansion. So, given all that, I think our endeavor will be to actually continue to deliver double-digit bottom line growth next year. Uh, Pawan, you would like to add? Well, I think, Shabata, you have uh, covered comprehensively. Uh, it's very difficult to give a margin guidance at this stage because we do not know as to how the inflation or deflation will play out for our key commodities like copra and uh, vegetable oil. But having said that, uh, what we are committed for is to uh, deliver at least uh, low teen profit growth next year. And the drivers, Shabata spoke about, drivers would be first of all in terms of, we definitely expect the revenue growth to be in double digits if there's inflation in the portfolio. Number two, we spoke about uh, significant improvement in uh, operating margin of uh, the digital and food business. Number three, there are a couple of international markets where there is definitely a possibility of improvement on, of operating margin. And number four, I think uh, there will also be some benefits of ANP amortization. So far, we have not driven uh, Sapola master band strategy. And so far, we've been spending in different buckets under Sapola. We believe uh, next year we should start that journey. So with the levers of all of this, and lastly, maybe also uh, if our premiation also plays out well, that also improves our gross margin. So with the mix of all this, we believe that at least uh, we would be targeting uh, low teen uh, profit growth, if not more. Perfect, sir. Well, this is very, very helpful. Thanks a lot for this. And this is exactly what I was trying to better understand. Thank you very much, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Arna Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, my question was uh, as we look. Yeah. My first question was on uh, as we look into next year. Uh, do you do we see when do we see the price decline in Sephora and Parachute anniversaries? And do we see any pockets of price increase that we can see? Because we are seeing certain categories in personal care where price hikes have started yeah. happening. So there is no commodity pressure. So how, could you just help us understand these two aspects on uh, pricing? So I think uh, I'll give you based on our current, you know, whatever the outlook is. Uh, in terms of uh, the revenue, the, the price, uh, you will see a slight revenue uptick in quarter four itself. Now quarter three we had earlier committed, but what happened was that since, uh, you know, in parachute we had to take some pricing, tactical pricing interventions to get volumes back on track. And in fact, if I look at offtake and secondary volumes, parachute growth have been robust in this quarter. Now, coming to next year, uh, I think, you know, if you look at history of Marico, the bigger, the, the, the sweet spot for us is actually, especially in parachute, is a scenario that follows as follows. No food inflation, copra inflation, we do, we have position gains and we deliver high volume growth and profitability is protected. We see that scenario likely to happen in the second half of next year. And as far as uh, Sapola is concerned, obviously I think the, if you look at uh, the price around, uh, you know, pre-Ukraine, the price of Sapola gold, this is just, that's the Bellwether brand, it was around 150 bucks a liter. It went to 230, it is currently around 160. So, most of the reductions are done, I think. And any pockets of price increase in Waho and other segments that you see? If there is copra inflation next year, parachute, we will take price increases. Sure, understood. Uh, my second question was on uh, the food business. So, you've got 18% growth in this quarter. This includes, I presume, uh, inorganic components that got added to the business. So, could you help us understand what could be the organic growth? Has it slowed down for some reason? Uh, what could kind of be the reasons why we think it could accelerate next year? So, uh, I think I alluded to last time is that uh, one of the things we are doing in our foods right is getting our supply chain and getting our gross margin right. So, uh, uh, so, there has been a slight slowdown, but if you look at trends, we should be in a position to get back into 20% plus growth from this quarter onwards. Uh, got it. And my last question, uh, Shagata, was basically uh, if you look at uh, the uh, your, uh, on Pavan's comment that next year, since uh, commodity prices are difficult to fall out, you still look to deliver a double digit earnings growth. 
given that margins it unlikely that you will see margins further go up from where they are so so the the burden of growth actually comes on top uh, given the current environment does it not look very difficult that we could see a double digit revenue growth next year because as as you rightly mentioned pricing you would probably anniversaries at some stage uh, but you would have to literally deliver very high single digit volume growth to get to double digit kind of earning growth So is there any difference in how I'm thinking versus what could be the template for next year? Now, if you look at uh, Cobra cycle, typically it follows 18 to 24 month cycle. So logically, we should have inflation in uh, Cobra. So we definitely expect once the seasonal months are over, it should definitely have an upward bias. So therefore, there will be a time where we have to take certain price increase. So if we are able to deliver, you know, at around six, seven percent, five to seven percent volume growth, I believe that the balance will be. Made up through pricing, as well as some part of the portfolio which will have uh, you know better better premiums. For example, let's say hair oil does better, or the digital business contribution increases. So that delta will be uh, sort of uh, filled up uh, from that uh, from that part of the portfolio. And also edible, as I said uh, earlier, that it has bottomed out. Uh, we have gone back to almost uh, pre-COVID level prices, so we do not expect any further deflation in uh, edible oil. As in, when if we face any inflation, of course there could be some price increase. So. As we move into quarter four, we definitely expect parachute to move into positive uh, revenue growth. Come quarter one, uh, the entire anniversarization of edible oil will be over, and then depending on if there's an inflation edible oil, that will also sort of uh, uh, move into positive trajectory. As far as value add hair oil is concerned, we might take certain price increases depending on uh, how the crude oil prices move. And typically, we see that we can always take two to three percent price increase in the portfolio without much of an impact on the volume. So with all this, we believe that if you are able to deliver certain level of volume growth, it can definitely move into uh, double digit uh, revenue growth. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Pawan. Uh, very very helpful. Uh, that's it from my side. All the best. Thanks. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Vivek M from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Oh uh, hi, good evening. Um, a follow up to the earlier question on food, Sagata. If we do the math, I mean. it looks like that you know uh, adjusting for clicks the base portfolio actually provided didn't grow is that a fair uh, you know is that a correct calculation no no so around the so the food uh, the core has been a mid single digit growth up to two elements as anyway anniversaries so basically it is just the clicks part of it the food part of clicks so as i said that it is at 18% i believe that from this quarter onwards we'll be back into 20% plus because of the fact that what we did was uh, we slowed down some of the things because of our ability to manage freshness and also our ability to get the gross margins right so also there has been no innovation uh, if you look at the other thing that has happened is that this year winter has set in late but anyway honey has not given significant growth if you look at everything i think uh, because last year was a big honey season So if you look at all that, I think it has a mid single digit. But as per trends in Q4 is concerned, and whatever steps we have taken, I think we should go back into 20% plus, and even next year into 20% plus kind of a growth. So March quarter, so that when you say 20%, that is 20% plus clicks uh, or including clicks. Uh, you are talking about 20%. Including, including, including. But that would still please. be very underwhelming, right? Because let's say clicks uh, does about what? About 35, 40 crores per quarter, right? and uh, let's say last year's base on food business was about 600 crores so i mean even if you don't do anything i mean the flix business itself is like giving you you know based on our calculation about 18 20% kind of growth unless unless we are getting the seasonality bit wrong so we make uh, what shobhita is mentioning is the base case that we should definitely grow at 20% plus in quarter four and we will be targeting more than 20% in uh, fy 25 having said that our uh, efforts will be organic for one right Yeah, largely because for first three four months, if you exclude, we acquired uh, Flix somewhere in the no, month June, of July. So June, July. So Flix has an anniversaryization will happen yeah. from July. Having said that, even quarter four, what we are planning is uh, high to mid high to uh, uh, low double digit in terms of organic food as well. Okay, okay, and you know the other thing is, Sagita. Uh, uh you have had mentioned in the past about you know and i understand you know businesses are dynamic and there are a lot of things which go right and wrong but let's say 850 crores when you were looking at for f24 and 1000 crores for f25 
you are now you know it looks like it's going to be more like 750 crores f24 what would you say that you know what did not go right uh, you know um, uh, is it the macro that you would say you know did not go as per the plan or is it you know your base case built in maybe one more acquisition uh, what, you know when you are ending with let's say 100 crores shorter where is the gap in your view so i think firstly um, we must uh, appreciate that our diversification journey has been reasonably good if you look at what was there in 20 versus this and food has grown for x now if i had to see one two things where perhaps that contributed to the 100 crore gap one is that we didn't want to grow at any profitability okay uh, unfortunately compared to so i mean so we were clearly conscious that we must not grow at any cost we must get the fundamentals right on supply chain stock freshness and other things the second thing is obviously which you can see is that that urban growth rate has which was very very strong during covid time and this one has been a little now tapering out and you can see in also some of the food categories and the food company fmcg that the growth was not at that level that was there say one or two years ago it's a combination of that having said that see at the end of the day it's always good to have an aspiration or a dream we are not way off i think from something completely new 750 by 850 is not a very very big miss it is a miss would have loved to do 850 but 750 is not bad at all and if you have to add add we wait over here so as i talked about it was an aspirational target that we had taken in f20 without sight in terms of which categories we will get in etc so largely if if you made the business more than forex i think it's a, it's a good achievement now standing here what we are looking at is that in the next few years we should be trying to achieve 2x of the scale where we are at this point in time so we are at 750 we should be targeting about 1400 to 1500 crores let's say we talk about fi27 so again we are taking aspirational targets but yes it's not a significant miss because we are more than 4x as to where we were in fi27 and the other thing i want to add is what we have finally achieved we are able to achieve in fi24 exit is a gross margin which is significantly better than sapola edible oil so therefore overall sapola brand We have actually been able to significantly up the overall blended margin. Got it. So you know the reason why I asked you this was it's you don't think it's because of rising competition. So you know we are seeing let's say Tata Consumer, Nestle, ITC, all of these companies also you know now giving uh, or getting into some of your zones. So do, you don't think it's because of competition? Yeah, as I said, that in low penetrated categories, I think more people investing actually grow the category. And uh, as you know, that there is a significant movement into healthy snacking and healthy in between meals. And as you are aware of the strength of the Sapola brand, so I think, as I said, that is not the you know issue. The issue is that, as I said, that we could have grown, we could have grown. Uh, the only category where we are where we participate where There has been no growth in the category, and actually the category has not been doing well post COVID in honey. Otherwise, uh, all the other categories. In fact, if you look at honey, chawan brush, of course, chawan brush, we don't have a presence. Both of the categories which are not doing well, you know, and uh, you know, especially there has been delayed winter and all that. But as far as oats is concerned, we are getting growth, and I think we have just entered snacking. Once we get the GTM and our overall supply chain and capability right. I think we've taken a pause this year in terms of getting all this right. I think we will get back into 20% plus growth. Now that is a baseline case I'm giving. We may be aspiring more, but I think a 20% plus baseline growth is something underrated next year. Got it. Very good to know that. Uh, you know, one more on PPC. When we look at PPC this quarter, Sogata and Pawan, uh, you know, the presentation mentions about 300 crore uh, quarter three run rate. and last year when i look at the same you know same time uh, you know same slide uh, uh, it says 300 crores ytd arr i if i assume that exit was higher than ytd average it doesn't look like a ppc has also uh, you know so, grown what am i missing yeah, you, there no no so there are two parts of the portfolio which have grown serums has been growing as a category and it's been doing well uh, in veil grooming the 10 rupee gel pack as you know anyway there is a stress in rural so that has got impacted the other part of the ppc is body lotion now this time there has been a very late winter and a short winter and that some of the you know sale has obviously reduced and some are flown into q4 okay 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 and lastly on vaho 
this you know bop so with how much of this you know again you think about uh, you you consider this uh, sluggishness you know because of macro factors and versus competition because your opening remarks did mention competition uh, as well so you know because as and when the cycle turns things get better do you think this portfolio comes back or you think you are would still be worried about competition over there so i think there are two ways of looking at it i think if you look at it the uh, the there is obviously a sluggishness in demand as you know uh, whenever there is a significant inflation and there is stress in demand smaller players get into it and also there is competitive intensity when organized players are focusing on that now there are two ways of looking at it i put all my resources and defend that versus a smarter way which we are trying to do is growing the mid and the premium uh, where i have much lower market share that makes far low gross margin higher margin and that is my intent to do because by if a throws money me throwing more money and actually you know selling at a low gross margin to get some market share is not something which is sustainable and not a smart thing to do over the long term got it got it thank you and wish you all the best thank you we have a next question from the line of akshay from fidelity please go ahead mr akshay can you please unmute your line hello yes yeah, akshay please go yeah hi am i audible yes yeah hi so congratulations on the good margin show most of my questions have been answered uh just wanted to understand two things from the team one was around uh you know the edible oil business we've seen quite a lot of volatility in the last two to three years uh given the kind of channel corrections that you would have taken uh competitive pricing etc when you look at this business i'm not saying in the immediate term but you know next four six eight quarters out how are you thinking about growth trajectory in that business that's question one uh question 2 is uh, you know you seem to be confident that the changes that you made in the distribution end will uh, you know help growth so if you could just sort of help us understand what were the difference between primary secondary so that we can at least write a gauge if you know there is a gap that that can be caught up in the coming quarters so two questions and i had a follow up but i'll wait for answers for this one so i think uh, if i look at sapola and let me tell you sapola works the best when there is stability which is and in the last three years there has been extreme volatility very high inflation followed by high deflation now in a high inflation what happens is the absolute price of sapola becomes unmanageable and therefore people don't upgrade or they downgrade when there is high deflation which we have seen in the last couple of quarters what happens is that the trade wants to destock because they don't want higher price stocks and they get stuck we also want to be very careful and not push because my consumption my even when i you know my consumption cost therefore is high and those tax if i sell and create higher str i am stuck with those and make low because i have to may have to pass on what i call you know below the line spends to basically flush out those stuff so therefore i see the way i look at sapola long term is this in the next 3 4 years in the sapola overall portfolio if as if edible oil is 50% and food is 50% with food delivering at least 10% higher gross margin if not more in the you know you know then sapola i think is a this an ideal thing which we want to do so therefore even if it means uh, you know mid single digit growth that's a very very satisfactory growth for me as far as sapola edible oil is concerned having said that so it is very very critical food needs to grow at 20% plus and when i'm talking about one of the other things you must realize that plix is wellness and plix has far more higher margin than normal food because wellness brand get to make higher margin so having a far more higher growth trajectory in food and as pavan alive alluded to the 20% is the base case if i can do more the better but having a 50 50 split between this and over the next few years is something which we must do now coming to your next question on gt i think uh, as i said it will be a gradual process because i don't want to drive this expansion with higher cost but with a smarter resource reallocation this will happen in phases so one has to be patient about it 
But what we are doing is a far more longer term reset to ensure viability of GT. Under indexation GT and over indexation in OT is not a right thing for long term profitability and we want to ensure that there is a balanced growth between the two channels. And as I said, unlike other organizations, uh, given that we don't sell sashi and we don't sell food and sapola in rural, our rural GM is actually far higher, you know, far better. And therefore, it makes all the more sense to continue to invest behind rural distribution. As you know, our rural market share is actually lower, especially in parachute, and also in some of the markets which are strong markets of ours, our value-added hair oil presence is not that great. We can always diversify. Bangladesh is a classic example where we had PCNO contribution of 90%. Today it is sub-60 and we have been able to do an amazing journey in growth. There is no reason why in some of our parachute strong markets we can replicate that. Okay, great. Uh, last question from my side, Sakata. How yeah. are you incrementally thinking about capital allocation in the last two to three years? We've, uh, you know, made a bunch of tuck-in acquisitions. Uh, do we wait to assimilate these at this stage, uh, or should we uh, be thinking of M&A as a continuing strategy here on? Firstly, I think uh, we believe that the digital acquisitions have been immensely successful. We might not be the best in the world in creating digital brands, but Marico aims to be top quartile in scaling up brands profitably. And let me tell you, we have not even, you know, done the synergies. We are just about starting the process of synergies, synergies between within the digital brands and taking some of the digital brands to GT. So if there are opportunities, we will do it. Obviously, we have a certain appetite. We have a certain uh, compared, which could be compared to some others different. But I think we will look at it. Having said that, I think we always believe that M&A is not a substitute for organic growth. Our focus continues to remain that we must deliver organic growth and M&A is a multiplier, not an escape button for not able to do organic growth. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We'll take the next question from the line of Harit Kapoor from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. I have two questions. Uh, one, yeah. was on the ad, one, one, one was on the ad spend side. Uh, on the standalone, you know, you have 11 12% decline. Just wanted to understand how do we read this? Is it uh, a higher uh, BTL than the core? Uh, obviously, I understand that, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the the advertising on the digital side is 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 in the is in the is in the stocks because it's a, a, a you know it's a stake entity. But I just wanted to get your sense on uh, you know this uh, decline in ad spend when we had uh, so much of gross margin to win. Thanks. I know you're right. If you look at uh, quarter three, of course, ad spend in India business, uh, which is reflecting in the standalone, has gone down, and there are three four reasons for that. Number one. Uh, you know, we have understand, under index expense in Sapola uh, this quarter given the volatility in underlying commodity and uh, cautious trade sentiment. Uh, and also we ran a you know visible campaign in last quarter where we had uh, spent quite a lot and therefore we had uh, cut down the expense in Sapola in this quarter. Secondly, in BOP, uh, uh, in Waho, we rationalized some of the ATL expense and uh, plowed back towards uh, consumer beneficial pricing. So that also sort of uh, reduced the NP spend. Lastly, uh, through the NRM project that we have done, we have rationalized some of the channel expense in uh, alternate channels of MT and Ecom, which was getting sort of uh, accounted for in ANP. And uh, even if you look at while this quarter fee, we have declined by about 8-9%, but if you look at YTD levels, the spend is about 6-7% uh, to 7 in terms of ANP. Got it. See, uh, Pavan, this is more of a one-quarter kind of a phenomenon in research events. Is, is that the way to think about it? Yeah, so if you go back, I mean, if you, if you talk about quarter four, you should definitely go back to growth of at least, uh, you know, mid to high single digit. And, and the second question was on, on the on the uh, GT changes. I, I just wanted to inside one question. You know, uh, o over the next two, three quarters as we implement this, uh, will there be a material difference between primaries and secondaries or it will be marginal? No, so I think right now, as I said, this one was 2% uh, 
we might do something more over the next one two quarters but ultimately the growth will also start coming no? because what we are doing is we are ensuring the system is geared towards driving growth driving distribution expansion so i don't think it will be beyond uh, one or two quarters it will it will start delivering growth rather than you know doing you know further corrections or reductions well, those are my two questions thanks all the Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Latika Chopra from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you know, what I could sense was, you know, relatively more confidence in low key learning schools for FY25 coming to you. Uh, if you look at, you know, different permutation combinations on top line growth, of course, you've talked about a gradual, you know, volume growth recovery over the next four, five quarters. uh you know we talked about this uh, you know gt reset that got kind of cleaned out uh do you have any kind of margin levers uh, which probably could take up margins even beyond fy24 levels of 21% which is giving you confidence in uh low team earnings for fy25 um so let me just explain this uh, difficult to uh, give a margin percentage guidance and that's the reason why i took the conversation to more in terms of uh, double digit to low teens profit growth and for that i have talked about the levers that i can see which i talked about the international couple of markets the digital business uh, the premiumization plus also we have an internal cost management uh, cell that keeps on optimizing uh, every year and we typically call out about 100 to 150 crores every year so with a mix of all this uh, we believe that uh, that kind of profit aspiration we should be able to meet and as, as i said we, we definitely expect anniversaryization of parachute in quarter four sapola in quarter one and if you were to look at the copra inflation cycle we expect inflation to kick in once the seasonal months are over so that that will lead to some price increase so if you are able to deliver uh, you know medium term growth levels in our core business i think it can lead to double digit revenue growth okay all right uh, the second question was uh, you know comment that you made on food business about 20% plus growth uh is you mean flex obviously is going to get into the base are we talking about next year you know you mentioned a number for fi 27 if i heard correctly of 1400 that the aspiration i understand but when you were setting that aspiration does it uh is it organic led or do would assume there is going to be some inorganic addition to this particular uh food business when you are look talking about that aspiration of 20% plus growth where we look at it is we have said the what we will now start doing the how obviously any long term strategic business plan has to be a combination of in you know, a 90% logic the last 10% ambition and magic uh, we have to also we can look at both you know uh, what i call inorganic opportunities as well as organic entry into new categories and i the biggest one we have to set it right is how can we succeed in snacking because snacking is the biggest market and healthy snacking is a significant consumer trend uh plix also i believe given the huge trend in wellness has the ability to really become a large brand and that was the combination of that do i have you know complete numbers for it i know but i think we are as long as we are 80% there 90% there we will be happy because nobody realized in 2020 that in 20 you know 27 that we will have a you know 2500 crore food plus digital business we never realized we will have it but we just dreamt of it we did it we may have not you know done 100% we have done 80% but we are there so i think broadly i think we should be able to do it i think what is most important is that do you have an operating model that drives repeatable growth i think we are broadly getting it i think in digital we have got it mostly right we have to get it right in food so Uh, thank you for the time, Pavan. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Mihir Shah from Nomura. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, since most of the long-term questions are already answered, I have a few near-term questions. Uh, one clarification, actually, on the primary stock correction in GT. Uh, it seems that there are more steps that uh, you are implementing. Can this continue to impact uh, even sales growth for the next few quarters as well? Or, given the stock correction, you know, has really happened, uh, you know, it can lead to an improvement in volumes optically, uh, at least in the near term, in in the fourth and the first quarter. 
So we have done uh, the stock reduction we started in this quarter. Maybe at best there could be an impact in uh, one more quarter, and we do not see really beyond that. Got it. And so Got also it. the second part is that from quarter three onwards, you will get the impact, the positive impact of that. Because if you are doing in quarter three, quarter four, from next year, FY25 and quarter three, quarter four, you will get the positive impact. <laughs> Okay, got it. Thank you, Swagata, for that. Uh, I wanted to really talk on the, uh, you know, how should one think about the parachute and Vaho volumes in the near term, uh, given that they have a high base. Do you see enough of strength and demand, uh, you know, improving from loose uh, BOP, uh, you know, that can help them to remain in the positive zone, uh, given they have a high base? So I think if I look at it, you know, for large brands, one of the interesting things you will notice is both upside and downside. First, offset gets impacted, followed by secondary, followed by primary. That cycle, we are almost seeing a complete turn as far as parachute is concerned, where we have seen offset improvements have happened. We are seeing secondary improvements have happened, and we now we are expecting primary. And as I said, that next year, hopefully, there will be a sweet spot of parachute, which is low food inflation some copra inflation and therefore, you know, always parachute gains in that kind of a scenario. As far as the VAHO is concerned, however, there are two parts to the story. One is that in mid and premium, we have to still do a better job, but we are now getting growth. In the BOP part, we are not getting growth. And the BOP part is not getting growth with a combination, as I said, of stress consumption with smaller players participating and some of the intense competition that is happening. Now, that part we are not clear about what will happen to that, but at least we are extremely focused on improving or accelerating our growth in the meat and the premium part of it. Understood. Got it. And a quick one on Sapola oils. I mean, given the sharp price cuts that we have seen, the GT correction, can one expect volumes growth to come back to double-digit growth uh, You know, in the near term or there is still headwind you know, from the uh, lower price players? Uh, that can continue to impact volumes for them. So I don't think we are aspiring for because the double digit growth of Sapola will happen only at the cost of margin. We don't want to do that. We are far more focused on putting the resources behind food growth and therefore even if there is a you know mid single digit growth we are okay with it. Got it. Thank you so much uh, Sogata and Pavan. Uh, wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. To conclude, uh, we've delivered a competitive performance in a rather challenging operating environment. If we go by off-tech growth, market share and penetration trends, we believe we should see gradually improving growth trends in the quarters ahead. The international business has been quite resilient despite transitory challenges in some of our key markets, with some of these subsiding. We expect to revert to a familiar growth trajectory from the next quarter itself. Overall, while our top line is subdued due to deflationary impact in India business and currency depreciation in international business, we would deliver record high operating margins and fairly healthy earnings growth this year. We've also made visible progress towards the strategic imperatives set out at the start of the year, especially in terms of portfolio diversification, and we would continue to invest behind the same. That is it from our side. If you have any further query, please feel free to reach out to our IR team and they'll be happy to address. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Marico Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.